Okay, so now for up to apply for data access, um, there's several steps here. So step one would be request an account. Uh, step two, log in and start an application. Step three, complete the form. And step four, submit your application. So I'll go over step one. Next, please. So step one, uh, you first request an account. So the primary applicant should email the access email to request a Magnolia user account uh, and uh, provide by providing full name, institutional email and position title and institution. Um, so, and it usually takes two to three days to get uh, to receive the login information. Uh, if it's a trainee application, uh, the, the supervisor, which is the primary applicant, on behalf of the trainee, also needs to email the access email and request a Magnolia user account for the trainee by providing uh, their name, institutional email, and program. So once you have your login credentials, you need to log in and start an application here. Uh, this is how the Magnolia uh, web page looks like. So you need to enter your username and passwords and you start your application. Just I wanna highlight for trainee application, it should be the trainee who should sign in. And once they sign in, uh, next slide please. Um, yeah. So once they sign in, there this is what's, what looks like. It's a page with instructions and notes to the applicant. So uh, the trainee here, there's an add button on the below. Uh, uh, so where's the blue arrow? So the trainee must click the add button and start the application. So this is very important because uh, if the supervisor initiates the application, the trainee cannot be added. So it should be the trainee who initiates the project in Magnolia. And this we we do this because we want to ensure that the trainee uh, are provided the learning opportunity to write their own proposals. So after the, the, it will be step three, which is complete the form. So there's uh, four tabs here, uh, instructions, part one, part two, and part three. Uh, so uh, I always insist a lot, to, I mean, you need to read carefully the instructions written here. And this is, a, there's a, uh, it also has a links to different resources on the CLSA website. So the more you know CLSA, uh, the chances your uh, application will be accepted are higher. So. Uh, we always, uh, it's, it's, it's never enough, I mean. So uh, after reading the instructions and understanding CLSA well, uh, there is part one, which is uh, the applicant, it includes uh, different tabs, the applicant, project team, timeline, description, and scientific review and ethics. Um, and if there's part two, which is the data checklist, you select the data here in part two, and there's part three about biosamples, but it, it's not activated yet. So under part one, uh, there is the applicant uh, tab. Uh, so here, uh, the applicant information is entered here, and there is a section on the bottom for the trainee information, which I uh, I show here. So it's here. Uh, so you, as I said, the supervisor is the main applicant, and the trainee information would go here. So uh, and please make sure you specify the the fee waiver on the bottom too. Uh, next tab would be uh, it's the project team. Uh, so here, just um, uh, make sure they include all the project team members here, uh, and that, that multiple can be added here. Uh, yeah, for the description uh, tab. So here, uh, it says the proposal per se. So here, where you write your proposal. So there is a project title. Uh, keywords like summary, background, study objectives, study design, and data analysis. So I want to highlight uh, some points here. Like you make sure you write the lay summary in the lay language. Make sure the objectives are clear and concise. Make sure uh, you, the use of requested CLSA, CLSA data is described here. And that you provided enough information to assess feasibility. So now I will go to for part two uh, in the application form. So part two, as I said, is the data checklist. So there's uh, uh, the first tab is the notes. So here 
and it, uh, there is a link for the CLSA data availability table. I include here a screenshot. It's a PDF document that we always update with what is currently available for data requests. Uh, so make sure you uh, consult this before you uh, select the data. And there is a second tab here, which is that uh, you need to choose the cohort. Uh, so we, you either choose tracking or comprehensive or both. Uh, just uh, please note that there are no physical assessment or medications and biomarker data for tracking cohort. So if your project depends on those data, you need not to select tracking cohort. Uh, and there's a, there's a question on the bottom here with, uh, I mean, if uh, you need to specify if your project is related to a previous approved CLSA project. And if it's, this is the case, you provide the number of that project, but make sure if this happens, describe in the proposal, what are you adding to the previous approved project? Um, yeah, and here is uh, for the course LSA data tab. So make sure you select only the modules needed for your project. So just like whatever you need, you just select those. Uh, the way I mean the modules as well as the waves. So if you only need baseline, you only select baseline. If you only need to questionnaire data, you only select questionnaire data. Uh, make sure they are described in your proposal, whatever you select here. Uh, just I want to highlight again that cognition and medications data are included in the questionnaire data module. So those are here. If you select questionnaire data, you'll get those, uh, you'll get all. And there's, uh, the, yeah, and there's um, here uh, the images and raw data. I will uh, select only images if they're needed. So because, I mean, uh, we do get a lot of those uh, selecting images, but the only they need is the outcome, the output data. So uh, that are available in the physical assessment module. So if you select images and you need images, you need to describe how they will be achieved. Uh, uh, they will use to achieve proposed objectives and how they will be analyzed. Uh, they definitely involve uh, additional costs. And step four would be submit your application. So here it's important, even if it's a trainee application, it's the primary applicant uh, who needs to submit the application, not the trainee. So he, although the trainee will fill out all the application, the uh, primary applicants uh, and this is to ensure that they had the he, he she were able to review the uh, proposal before they submit. And applications must, must be received by 5 p.m. Eastern time on the submission deadline. Um, 